Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. I'm still working on making shrimp baits. You remember these guys. We worked on them in the last two videos and we started out with just a concept, just a sketch drawing. We worked our way to making a mold and then we cast and finished some shrimp made from a couple of different materials, right? Resin, both clear and opaque and soft plastic. Like this little dude right here. I had a bunch of questions on my soft plastic casting technique and uh, let me first start out by saying I'm primarily a hard bait guy but it's really a good idea to have the skills to make soft plastics because it comes in handy and it kind of rounds off your lure making skills. So if you're new to the channel I'm Franco I'm a licensed professional engineer and I make lures and in these videos I share my techniques and I incorporate a little bit of science into the art of lure making so stick around. Right, so let's first talk about the equipment I use. Now, I don't use very fancy stuff because it's not my primary method of making lures. So you're going to need some plastisol. And if you don't know what plastisol is, it's a liquefied plastic that starts out as a liquid. And then in the process of heating it, it becomes a kind of temperature sensitive soft rubber that you can melt again uh, at temperatures at around 325 to 350 Fahrenheit. Now, if you're just starting out, you don't have to start out uh, buying an expensive jug of plastisol. You can do what I do and ask all your friends to give you all the soft plastics they don't use. And then you can just separate them out into the colors that you prefer. And then just by using an oven safe uh, glass container and a microwave oven, you can melt this stuff down and mold your own soft plastics. It's not difficult to do. I'll show you everything I've done to keep the cost down and make it simple for those of us who aren't really focused on this kind of lure making. Right, so now that you have your source of soft plastic, whether it be a uh, virgin plastisol or this old stuff, you're going to need a mold. Now I'm using my silicone molds that I make myself. Now, of course, you can buy uh, molds for soft plastic lures online uh, and, or you can have them custom made. It's expensive and it's something I haven't really delved into. The other thing you're going to need is some way to inject that mold because trying to actually pour the soft plastic into a mold like this is uh, almost impossible. Now this is a poor man's solution for a, a soft plastic injector. It's stainless steel. It has silicon uh, rubber seals in it and it's pretty doggone inexpensive compared to the stuff that's sold specifically for this kind of lure making. I actually bought this online but I also saw it in Walmart. It's a, a meat basting injector. It actually is designed for barbecuing and baking turkeys and that kind of thing. And it comes with an assortment of injector needles and all I did with it is cut off the majority of the length of that needle and only left about a quarter of an inch sticking out. For those of you who are actually soft plastic lure makers, you'll probably not be happy with this. It won't inject very much material and it won't likely last as long as the ones made specifically for doing this. But for those of you just getting into it, spending $15 on this as opposed to about 50 on a aluminum one made for injecting this stuff, uh, it might be the difference between whether you want to try it or you don't. And while I'm going to go ahead and go over how I make these eyes, and I'll show you how I embed these little tentacles, but the previous videos will give you a better idea on how I designed the mold to accept those. Now you'll notice too that these soft plastic lures have embedded wire harnesses so that I can tie onto it and I can put a treble hook on it. And it also allows me to put internal weights in there to make it sink uh, how I want it to sink without having to add any weight to my line. And I put a little rattle in there as well. Uh, hopefully you can hear it. So I'm going to show you how to make a harness for a soft plastic. Unlike a hard plastic lure, the resin in a hard plastic lure will actually support the harness and make it strong. But of course, the soft plastic won't. And so the harness has to be tough on its own. So let me show you how to make a harness so that the soft plastic is as durable as it's going to be. And I start out with some stainless steel leader wire. This is 
28 inches in diameter and uh, it says 174 pound test. So, so using the leader wire, I've taken a, a piece about six inches long and made a little bit of a loop eye on there uh, with a, just a few twists. And I'll place that right where the tie on eye will go. Now I'm using my mold as a template, but you could make a template and make this process just a little easier. Now I'm gonna bend right where I know my belly eye is gonna be. Goes right there. And then I'm gonna bring it back around to form the eye. And normally I would leave it like this for a hard plastic lure, but with these soft plastic lures, you actually have to make a twist eye right here. And I'll do that by just bringing this tag end around and then just giving it a couple twists on the standing wire and it doesn't take much two twists is all you need and once you got the twists in you can refine uh, the look of it and the alignment placing it in your mold and double checking the alignment this final tag here I'll leave there because it stabilizes the harness in the mold and allows me to put little rattles and weights on here if I want to. All right, so this is the correct way to make a harness for soft plastics. And I'm making a big deal of it because as the video rolls on, you'll see that I absentmindedly make and use the wrong type, the type with just the little U-bend at the bottom. And that, while I can use it, I'll likely lose fish. So while the rest of the video will demonstrate how I attach rattles and weights, uh, be sure that you do your bend like this. Let's go back to the video. Now typically I'll make rattles out of a small section of drinking straw and I'll just cap it with some epoxy putty and stick a, a BB in there. The problem with that is that that plastic is going to melt. So you have to use something that can handle the heat uh, and these little glass uh, rattles work just fine. Now to remedy the problem with this plastic straw melting, you can wrap it in foil and this is just self-adhering HVAC foil and if you just give it a couple of wraps that actually protects the plastic from melting and it gives you a nice shine on the inside of your lure. So then to make your, the rattle part of the harness you just glue it onto the harness with some crazy glue or what I like to use is UV resin. And that usually does the trick. It doesn't have to be on there super tight because the casting will hold it all together later. All right, so the next step in the way I make these is to put in the little bundle of tentacles that go coming out of the head. And all it is is a little bundle of jig skirt material and some fly tying flash. And I got all this stuff online from the cheapest place I could find to buy fly tying gear. I'm not big on fly tying, but I really think that lure making is really the art of fabrication. You really have to have uh, some skills and some knowledge in uh, forming plastic, cutting and working with metals, mixing and pouring two-part epoxies, working with paint, and finally some sort of clear coat. So if you add to that soft plastics and some fly tying skills, you really expand your ability to make lures that are a little more interesting and maybe more versatile. All right, uh, it's definitely hot enough. When you pull it out of there, it usually has quite a few bubbles in it. And you don't want to pour or inject your lure with uh, the plastisol, so sort of saturated with bubbles. And what you want to do is allow these bubbles to sort of naturally off gas and just leave. But what I like to do is I like to heat up my little toaster oven and I'll put it in here at about 300, 325 degrees and I'll also have my injector in here. This way, when I pull the material into the injector, it doesn't automatically cool off. So what I'd like to do with color is to get this kind of effect where the grooves in between the shell plates of this little shrimp are darker than the rest of that shell. And the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna use this assortment of powdered pigments. Lots of folks will do it after the fact, after they pour it and demold it. But I'm gonna use a small detail brush and I'm gonna brush the colors right into the mold. Now that's a little tricky. If you make a mistake, you gotta go through all the trouble of cleaning it all out. Uh, 
and starting over, but you gotta have a little faith. So I'm gonna use this sort of dark golden ochre kind of color. Mm. This stuff goes a long way. If you can see it on the brush, you probably got too much on there. I'm gonna work it right at the very top of these ridges. I'm gonna get a little extra on the bottom. I want it to be a little heavier down here. Maybe I'll put a few spots. So now with that powder in there, I gotta deal with this a little bit more cautiously. So I'm gonna carefully place this rattle in here and I'm gonna put my little tentacle bundle right in the slot that I shaped for just that purpose. So now I can join the two halves and get ready to pour. Now when I'm prepping to inject this stuff, I like to work on either a piece of glass, a piece of steel, or even just spreading some aluminum foil. This way, all the spillage, you can just pick up and reuse. Now I'm making a mess, but I like to have a sort of a piled up reservoir on top. So as it cools and shrinks a little bit, it has a little bit of something to draw from. And I'll speed up the process a little bit by putting it in my refrigerator. All right, before I pull the other one out, I've gone ahead and heated up a slightly darker color and kind of green. And I want to color it just a little differently. So I'll stick it in here to get the bubbles out. Let's see how this came out. See? Oh, that looks pretty cool. And you can see the shimmer of the rattle. And I hope you can hear the rattle. And you can see that golden brown pigment in that belly. It looks pretty cool. Let's move on to the next one. All right, with this one, I'm gonna use a harness uh, that doesn't have a rattle. And all I did was add about a three gram uh, split shot weight on there just to make it sink a little faster and cast a little farther. All right, so you can see, I actually was able to be a little more, uh, I guess, messy and less careful with the application of the color. And now I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this and inject the plastic. All right, while that sets, let's go ahead and put eyes on those other two. Now I really like these, this little arrangement with the eyes on these little pegs and all that is, is some monofilament line. So what I'll do is I'll take a piece of fine wire and I'll create a path for this monofilament line to run through. Then it's just a matter of pulling it through to the length of how much of a little antenna do I want it sitting on. And then I'll slide the other eye on. Now you can glue these with just some crazy glue, but I like using UV resin as glue. Tiny little drop of UV resin on the inside here, closer to the lure than the eye. And then I'll slide the eye on, onto the drop. And then it's just a matter of hitting it with the UV light. And the nice thing about these beads is that it allows the light to go through. I'll just cut the excess off. That really is pretty natural looking. And that shiny foil doesn't hurt. All right, so let's see how this one came out. All right, check it out. It has like gold plates. That's kind of cool. Let me clean it up and I'll show you what it looks like with eyes. Oh, by the way, let me show you how I deal with this extra wire. You just push the rubber down, pop it off and it disappears. All right, all right, that looks pretty cool. I'm liking these little things. These little dudes are gonna be a lot of fun to fish with. Can't wait to get them out in the salt water. Actually, with these colors, even out on the lake will be fun. So as always, thanks for watching. Thank you for all the comments you guys have been offering up. And if you haven't subscribed and you're enjoying this stuff, subscribe and give me a thumbs up. It really helps to build the channel and helps me to keep bringing videos your way. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you on the next video.
Thank you.